All right, hey guys, today we're gonna be talking about clone consoles and bootlegs. They're not the same, but quite a few people seem to think they are. So we're just gonna go ahead and talk about the differences. We'll also talk about emulator boxes like the Retron 5 and just emulators in general. All right, so let's jump right in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is what are bootlegs? What makes a system a bootleg over just a console that plays the same games? Well, this is just my interpretation, but I consider bootlegs to be consoles that pass themselves off as the originals or try to trick consumers into thinking they're the originals. So, for example, is if you remember back when a Wii first came out, there were a whole bunch of consoles from China that tried to pretend they were the Wii. They looked like the Wii, they advertised sports games, but they weren't even close to being the Wii. They couldn't play any Wii games, and they just overall weren't very fun. The Pop Station is another big example. There's Pop Station Portable, which made itself look like a PSP, didn't play PSP games, not even close to PSP graphics. I don't own any bootleg consoles, but I'm just gonna use this as an example of what a bootleg SP would look like. This is actually a clone console, but I'm just using it for comparison. The clone consoles will mirror the original design and sometimes even have official branding on it, but you'd notice the quality of the actual product was not the same as the original. These systems would often come preloaded with quite a few games. Many of those games would be duplicates, and pretty much none of the games included were games for the system it's trying to imitate. The second type of system we're going to be talking about is clone consoles. While they sometimes do look like bootleg consoles, they are very different. The main purpose of a clone console is to be able to play old games with newer hardware and extra features. They're usually created after the patent for the original system expires, and they set themselves apart from bootlegs also by using a different design than the original system. They can also have additional features not found in even modded versions of the original console. For example, this one has USB charging and even supports TV out. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, so it runs all the old games without the old hardware. That makes it like an emulator, just like the one on my phone, right? Well, not exactly. Let's imagine your Game Boy Advance like this. You have your processor, you have your sound, you have your video and all inputs. This is super simplified. But just imagine this is what the system looks like. It reads from the cartridge, reads your input, and then displays the appropriate sound and video. Emulators are a bit more complex. You see, your computer can't run Game Boy Advance games natively, so what the emulators have to do is they have a virtual GBA sound chip, virtual GBA CPU, and virtual GBA video. Then things get even more complicated. What happens is it reads your game file and it has to process it through the virtual GBA processor chip. Then the output is sent back to your computer which has to process through the virtual GBA sound chip and then sent back to your computer which is sent to the virtual GBA video chip and then it's sent to your speakers and monitor. As you can see this is quite a bit of extra work and that's why if even if you had a computer that was three times as powerful as your Game Boy Advance it would still have trouble keeping up with games since it has to do all these extra processes. Clone consoles have a much more simpler approach. Instead of doing all that fancy software-based emulation, they use what's called hardware-based emulation. This means that instead of using all that fancy software and sending everything to a central CPU, it uses actual hardware that's similar to what was used in the original Game Boys. And since the chips are actually very similar, you can actually run the games much easier without all that extra work. And since these old consoles don't use very fast processors, the parts are cheap and easy to make, and they play the games pretty well. Another nice feature of clone consoles is, since you have direct access to all the hardware when you're making it, you can actually add in some extra features as I mentioned before. One neat feature in this Game Boy Advance is sleep mode. I can easily just freeze my game at any point in time. This is because when they were making it, they were able to directly tie in the extra features to the actual hardware itself. In order to get anywhere close to some of the features you see in these clone consoles, you have to use some extra hardware like a Game Shark or an external mod. But when you're making a clone console, you can build it right in. But the downside of using a clone console is, since the fact that they don't use the actual original hardware, they can sometimes have some quirks. It's usually just minor graphical glitches, or even some minor audio errors. But they usually play most games okay. It really depends on the clone system. Also you may find that some unofficial hardware that normally works in your normal systems doesn't quite work the same in clone consoles. Alright, and the last type of console we'll talk about is ones like the Retron 5 and the Retro Freak. Believe it or not, even though these accept cartridges, these are actually software emulators. This adds an extra step in the emulation process. 
The first thing they do when you start up your game is dump the game and your save to a file, and that's what's run through the software emulator. It's pretty much just like if you were to run a game through the virtual console on your Wii or Wii U. The software-based emulation allows you to play it on an HD TV without needing any type of upscaler, and it also allows for features such as save states. But at the end of the day, both the Retron 5 and the Wii U's Virtual Console are pretty much the exact same thing as an emulator you find on your computer or on your phone. But one huge advantage that software emulation has is updates. If there's a problem with a specific game on your Wii U Virtual Console or your Retron 5, the company can easily push out an update that will fix the problem. But with hardware-based emulation, if it's the actual hardware that's causing the problem, there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. Alright guys, that's all we have time for today. There's a whole lot more to emulation, hardware and software than I was able to cover. Like, I wasn't even able to start on covering memory and how that's managed. But I, I, maybe we'll do another video on that later, but probably not. So I hope you guys enjoyed the information I was able to provide in this video, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.